Uh, there. Yep. That's the theater. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Matt, and I am from Flick Fanatics. We are here at the premiere of Iron Man 3. And. Oh! Hey, uh. It's Tony Stark. Tony Stark is here with us today. <laughs> that would be me. My name is Matt, and uh, I've uh, got a minute. Can I ask you some questions? Well, you know, I'm pretty busy. But for you, absolutely. Anyway, <gasps> it's, this is real. Yeah. Uh, what? Um. So, what are you up to? Why are you here, of all places? <laughs> well, um, I heard they were making a little movie about my exploits, so I figured come on down and see if they did a good job. We'll see. I, I kind of don't have much faith, but we'll, oh. we'll help. We're hoping. Oh. We're hoping. We're, so, uh, we're pretty excited. But the dying, burning question I have uh, <laughs> is: uh, Spider-Man going to appear in this movie? I've been dying to the know. burning question. It's been on my mind all day. <laughs> that kid's probably got homework or something. Oh. I don't Shout know. out! I wouldn't expect him to show up at this one today. Oof. Okay. Well, calling uh, out. Calling I understand. Out. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Thanks. It's been great chatting with you. I hope you guys. I hope you guys. All the success in the world. Yes. Thanks. Tell them to check out Flick Fanatics, too. Yeah, Flick, Flick Fanatics, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Ooh. Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back to Season 2, Episode 1, first video episode. Uh, we have a, uh, a doozy in store for you today. Um, we recently saw the movie Iron Man 3, and uh, yes, we did. you got a poster too. I'm X 3D. Well, I'm X 3D. All our nice people got posters. I'm <laughs> X 3D. I got one too, I just didn't bring it. Now, don't judge the movie on how cool the poster looks because the poster is pretty cool and the movie we're gonna get into that yeah we'll get into <laughs> that you know, shortly. this is John joining us uh, part of the Flick Fanatics family yeah. mm -hmm. so, good to be back thanks for having yeah. me now well why don't you tell us a little about the movie John but here we go uh, Marvel's Iron Man 3 pits brash but brilliant industrialist Tony Stark slash Iron Man against an enemy whose reach knows no bounds. When Stark finds his personal world destroyed at his enemy's hands, he embarks on a heroin quest to find those responsible. This journey at every turn will test his mettle. When his back is against the wall, Stark is left to survive uh, by his own devices, relying on his ingenuity instincts to protect the closest to him. As he fights his way back, Stark discovers the answer to the question that has secretly haunted him. Does the man make the suit, or does the suit make the man? Sounds like an Oscar uh, synopsis. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, the essay response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. So, well, yeah. Alright, so stuff. That synopsis, the very end. The man like make the, the suit, or yeah. the suit make the man? I didn't have. Yeah, I mean, they didn't really. Know, they push didn't that talk theme. about that or anything. There was like no like hint of that. It's pretty. Yeah, cool. it, yeah. Uh, basically, the movie does a great job of exploring Tony Stark. Uh, that's the most impressive thing about the movie, aside from the visual flair and action. The action scenes are um, quite something to mm -hmm. look at. It's pretty cool. Uh, the 3D in the action scenes is, is really cool, too. Yeah. But aside from that, it's pretty pointless, like most movies. Um, uh, you know, it's a crazy movie. Uh, I think that it's... Uh, that was like my pro. My con is uh, the writing. I think the writing is uh, one of the worst for the Marvel movies that we've seen in a while. Um, and it's not because of, like I said, it's not because of Tony Stark's character, it's mm -hmm. because of the writing of, collectively, of all the like characters and the story. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So. I agree with Matt, you know, I, it's like a Tony Stark that like we don't see, like, ever. It's post-Avengers with the... Uh, you know, he he has to deal with a lot of crazy, you know, anxiety stuff. But, like, uh, you know, it's a more serious side. And I think, like, that's something I've been wanting since Iron Man 1. Like, Tony Stark isn't always that goofball. Like, I don't, I think that notion began with the comics and, and or I mean, with Robert Downey Jr. 
and they kind of followed through with it even with more recent comics. But yeah. he's kind of always been a serious, he's had a serious side, and they don't really explore that. And this movie does really well yeah. exploring it. Uh, like, yeah, CG's great, special effects are great, 3D's okay. Um, but the, the, my cons are like the humor is overkill. Like, in a lot of scenes, the humor is overkill. I think they try to fit comedy in mm -hmm. almost every single scene. And that's not an exaggeration. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, in the structure, like you said, just a lot of plot holes. Tons, tons of plot holes that we'll, we'll get into later. And, yeah, it's, yeah, to me, I kind of view it as, like, big uh, disappointment. Like X Men Three, Spider Man Three, bad. Mm -hmm. Just almost as bad as that. I mean, if not, if not yeah. I mean, it was a not letdown, equal. and it was right. I was disappointed. Mm -hmm. Total letdown. Like I agree with you guys. I loved the action. I liked the uh, the CG. Everything was, you know, it was nice. Like everything looked really good. And um, Tony Stark. Like I usually like. I, I don't like Iron Man. Like I've never really liked Iron Man. And I never really liked the movies because they were they to me they always felt like they were trying to be funny, like mm -hmm. forcing the humor. Mm -hmm. And I like did not find any of it funny. And this one did bring in a more serious side of Tony Stark, which I wanted from the beginning. I was like, you know, I wish he wasn't such like a goofball. Yeah. A little, little too much, a little too late. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, and yeah. I, like the humor, I think I laughed a few times, mm -hmm. like a few. But I mean, they were really pushing humor usually, the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. saying Tony Stark. Yeah, yeah. He was more serious. Mm -hmm. They, since he was serious, they like had to turn everything else into a joke. Right. Like it was to, to keep people happy, but I don't. Yeah, I don't get the. It was, the it was like too off. many like terrible, terrible, terrible jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, stupid one like action pun, action yeah. pun. Kind of like Michael Bay writing. Yeah. And turn, like turns like just that. People are blind. People. Well, it's juvenile humor, and people mm -hmm. are for that apparently in America. Yeah. And China it didn't receive well. No, China. China well, they also had some four minutes of added stuff, and they hated it. Yeah. Like because it was all. Now the they're movie. making. Yeah. Now they're making the the suits for Twenty Star. <laughs> yeah, you gotta deal with China. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, spoiler free review, and as a not comic book adaption review, I would give this movie a 2.5 out of 5. So it was almost passable, but it fell short for me in a lot of ways. It felt very let down, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, like I give it a 3 out of 5. It's a 6 out of 10. It's a D. It just barely passes for me, um, only because I really like to see Tony Stark, like actually be Tony Stark yeah. more, more so, mm -hmm. especially with his uh, tinkering with without the iron suit and like his uh, using his his noggin. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it. Yeah, everything else was kind of for me. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the 2.5 as well, um, just because like the humor was stupid, um, the action and like Tony Stark. You know, being like a normal person, like was like the only redeeming thing in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've uh, given movies like uh, Die Hard five, uh, I think a four. Four out of five, yeah. Four, yeah. And uh, GI Joe, I gave a pretty good score, three point five, I think. Yeah, four. That's some people would view as the worst movies. But kind the of. thing is, yeah. I expected that from those movies, mm -hmm. and in this movie, I think that um, Shane Black just sucks and he uh, ruined this movie for yeah. me and I think that his direction and writing, he co-wrote it with the guy, I think they were uh, uh, trying to pull a fast one on people. Right, even though... Um, stupid. Hey, right. we're back, but this time, talk about the spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> Heavy spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie. Yeah, if you haven't seen the movie, I wouldn't watch. Right yeah, now. Trust us enough. Watch the spoilers. Mm. Don't waste the, you know, ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, you well, should see the movie and make opinion for yourself, because mm. it's good to have your own opinion. Well, but, <laughs> no, I, yeah, I say go see it. Believe us. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, really go though, see it. Um, yeah, let's just start this off quick. <laughs> <We're good. laughs> right, this is taking boom, boom, boom. ten minutes to get into. Okay. Uh, Shane Black or whoever wrote this movie wrote Mandarin off as a joke, <laughs> and that's bull. That's bull crap. Yeah, 
all the trailers and all the press and hype and shit right. is just like, oh, the Mandarin, you know, like, ooh, you know, it was he's a, gonna be the main villain. And people say it's a twist, mm -hmm. and it's not so, it's, it's really a bait and switch. There's good twists, right? There's the mm -hmm. prestige. There's, you know, there's, uh... Saw. <laughs> but yeah. the, that's the first, I would, saw, I, first saw film. Right. Good twist, the rest of them. I mean, like, twists are... It's just one thing when you literally heavily emphasize, like, through Facebook, through mm -hmm. trailers, through TV spots, through interviews. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe Ben Kingsley sat through an interview with a straight face and told us what he told us. It's like, yeah, the Mandarin. I brought a very better be ready villainous role. Yeah, I was like, like he, the... I think he was literally in it for I think a total of like eight minutes, maybe, between yeah. the TV like mm -hmm. terrorist videos they did yeah. and when he's actually in person. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they wasted such a great actor. That kind of pissed yeah, me off more than so the fact that they so. ruined the character. What he turns out to be is an actor. Literally, he's like some British, British actor. Junkie, the guy named Tyler, actor. He's like yeah. a drug addict. Killian, Killian bought him to be yeah, a, a the decoy. Face, the face just, of terrorism. Yeah, that was like their right. whole, like, oh, you know. Yeah. He's just putting a face to terrorism. And now here's the thing. If you're a fan of Superman, and they did this with Lex Luthor, or if you're a fan of Batman, and they did this with the Joker, Joker you'd be up in arms about this. Mm -hmm. And Green but, Goblin, but, but, here, but here, it's just okay. Like, everyone's okay with it. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. You're right. Well, everyone's okay with it because they say, oh, no, it's okay. At the end, Killian reveals he's the Mandarin. And this is my beef with that, right? I think Killian is... What? Killian, and this is really hard to, like, explain, but Killian made this idea of the Mandarin, right? Even though we've had this idea of the Mandarin, through, even, like, with, like, the Ten Rings and yeah. hinting at with Iron Man 1, even parts of Iron Man 2, there's things that hint yeah. at it. Yeah. And even in the trailer, we get they a have the clear Mandarin's depiction <laughs> with all the rings on them. And that's like not in the film. Yeah, at all. And like, then no so, I think like when Killian's like, I'm the Mandarin, he just means like, I'm the head of this organization. Mm -hmm. I am the face of terrorism. Yeah. But there is, but that's yeah, not like right. a real Mandarin character. Yeah. And it, what, I think what added insult to injury is they threw dragon tattoos on him. Yeah. No <laughs> point whatsoever. Right. Like Killian was this white nerd mm -hmm. scientist yeah. with no Asian origin mm -hmm. or mythos or anything. Yeah. And they just threw freaking dragon tattoos on his body. He's like, I'm the man who wanted to die 20 seconds later, mind you. Yeah. So it was just, it was, just, it was, it was just adding insult to injury. Like, okay, they, they threw Ben Kingsley away. I wanted to walk out, but I'm like, mm -hmm. well, let's see what they do. They could pull a fast one. Yeah, because I that scene something was going to happen. I thought something was going to change. Dude, like, mm -hmm. you wasted and seeing as how Mandarin is like the main villain. Oh, yeah, that's in the, the comic. Yeah, his arch nemesis. And, and everyone was, totally was kind of promised that in a lot of ways. But now. It's just so stupid. And anyway, I was going to read, before they came out with the movie, Shane Black did an interview with Marvel, and he talked about Mandarin, because everyone's like, oh, let's hear about yeah. Mandarin. And he goes, I hate to break it to you, but he's not from space in this. The, ri the, the rings are rings. They're showmanship. They're, <laughs> first of all, we don't even see them. They, they don't, don't see the They took them out, so clearly they must have, like, even yeah. fucking, oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you can put a beep over that. This is just such an awful, I mean, awful mistake, and I hope... Shane Black, I hope you, you <laughs> suck, dude. You I hope suck. you see this. I hate you so and it's much. a wake up call. Like, just, you're no, he knows already. They already had. Yeah. How about uh, that ending? Arc reactor, gone. Yeah, it's like the last two minutes he's like talking about, oh, you know, I gotta get these pieces of shrapnel out of my chest. And they, they show like him in surgery and they're pulling out like little bits of metal. Yeah, and, then, and then the next scene, he's like standing on like the edge of his like where his destroyed house, house with a paper bag. And he pulls out the arc reactor and he just like tosses it in into an the open ocean. body. Yeah, open. And it's like, <laughs> can we like, can we rewind for like? And then it says Tony Stark will return. Or Tony and will then return. it's the end of the yeah. movie. Not the Mandarin, but like the whole thing was based on Extremis, right? Yeah. Which is a story arc, which they did a decent job at. They did do a lot of like tweaks on it, right? But like, I think the biggest thing too was like the inconsistency with the Extremis soldiers. Like, yeah. one would die from a Unibeam. One would die from like electricity mm -hmm. and the whole wires, but yet they could regenerate limbs, and they're supposed to regenerate like anything. Mm -hmm. And like they just did not do a clear job of defining what this was. Like if you could tell me, like what exactly that was, moviegoers couldn't. Mm -hmm. Like they're really nano machines, and they're yeah. really supposed to like work with like technological stuff mm -hmm. and making them like a organic Iron Man. That was not like lava. 
Right. Like in the and movie, they put yeah, it they, as like kind of like magma. Right. And, and I think that's why people like were like, oh, like Killian really breathed fire. That's like Asian. But no, like that all was ex- so dumb. Yeah, I know. That was so dumb. This is the I thing. Like, like all extremist soldiers could do that. Uh-huh. And it's stupid that they waited till that yeah. moment to do that. They should have did it right away yeah, with like, the exactly. first few to point out like, hey, we are organic Iron Man. We can generate heat. We can shoot it. You know, and yeah. that's what extremist was. But they did a poor ass job of writing that. Yeah. And uh, a lot, yeah, a lot of plot holes, a lot of questioning. Here's a plot hole I have. The Mandarin destroys your house. Uh, how do you have all these suits come and save you at the end of the movie? Yeah, where were, where they? were they coming from? I thought all your suits got destroyed. Uh, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, they're, they're trying to introduce like a mm-hmm. new suit and stuff. That's cool. Yeah. I just think that it was like... It wasn't well, too different. The suit wasn't like that like different. Yeah, it was just more could, like, red. He could go like this. And they would like fly to him, right? Because he was working on little injections, yeah. Which kind of tied into extremists. That was the weird, like extremists. I like saying extremists. Yeah. Anyways, that's been enough of us talking. Yeah. I'm, I'm about depressed as can be. Now. <laughs> conversation. Let's go watch some good Marvel movies. Yeah. Let's go watch Kick Ass so we can get ready for the new one. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks everybody. Super thanks for uh, returns. tuning in. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and like us on Facebook. And subscribe on iTunes, too. Yeah, we iTunes. We have some new podcasts soon, too. Yeah, so. we're going to have not just video. When we think of anything else we want to review. Old movies. Old movies, video games, TV shows. doesn't even matter. Music. Sky's the limit for the audio podcast. <laughs> for the audio. The universe is one of this. Yeah. Video. Well, thank you. <laughs> we'll see you next sense. time yep. for The Great Gatsby. Yeah, next.